Hey, welcome back to the Drawing Database. This is Professor Mark Leone, and today we're going to look at and spend 15 minutes with the French Rococo artist and painter Jean Watteau, who was born in 1684 and died in 1721. So let's take a look and feast on these really gorgeous drawings of generally French aristocracy at the time. That's uh, typically the movement of the Rococo was a decorative, relatively decorative style of a fete galant, of feasting and partying, and romantic interludes. And Watteau was, I think, one of its, along with Fragonard, was one of its greatest um, uh, uh, users of this particular decorative style. And what we find along the way with Watteau is, is just absolutely gorgeous draftsmanship. So here we have a, a lounging female figure and the majority of what you'll find with Watteau's drawings is a very almost effortless kind of contour lining uh, with multiple colors. You'll see reds, you'll see charcoal, chalk like blacks, deep values, and you'll see a sketchy technique that utilizes uh, a relative shorthand, meaning that the artist um, didn't do a full value study but had enough uh, information in the drawing, the looseness, for instance, in the lacing of the fabric, the dark lines and contour, the beautiful control, the, the curvature of the head, all of that works to uh, great, um, uh, is in uh, masterfully uh, controlled. Here you see some soft rendering in the shadow tones of the leg, a little bit of a coarse shadow through here, and then this that loose, grace, loosey, uh, gracefulness that he was that he was known for. One of my all-time favorites. Be besides Rubens in terms of academic draftsman or traditional draftsman, Watteau is probably my second my second favorite. Another example, the same kind of uh, really quick style. Notice the rhythmic um, line work of the head. Beautiful position of the head and kind of the tilt here. Um, uh, rhythmic uh, choppy lines to showcase the hair, a few lines to showcase the head head wrapping, and then we get the lounging figure, and then a great deal of foreshortening out this way, right, coming through the model. And of course, she's gracefully um, resting her arm or elbow on what's probably the ground or a bed of some sort, raising a glass. Very loose, very sketchy. Um, the larger chalk uh, pastel. Uh, to give highlight tones. Notice that this tone of the paper, this, this area inside the box is kind of a, a light brownish tone and you use that magnificently to show off highlights and so we get a light mid-tone in most of the, the drawing. And then he uses rich darks very quickly to signify shadows here and here and to give emphasis to the model. And just, just a little emphasis in toning here in the head to give a focal point, a little soft rendering to those facial forms. Again, Watteau using a full range of drawing uh, colored tones. Generally in the skin tones, he left this, this, this colored paper here. Then we get kind of the sanguine, um, which is kind of a blood red to, to signify Caucasian flesh, especially in the fingers, hands, right, toes of the foot here. We have a woman kind of grasping her foot and looking up. But then the beautiful rhythms and movements of the contouring in the hair, the chalk, everything is kind of moving up in this direction with the line work, especially because of the focus and emphasis on her looking up. It's a little pixelate. I'll pull back a little bit. And then we've got some of this just beautiful indication of folds with the charcoal and a little bit of tone over all this. Uh, inside the the um, the wrapping, just like we have here on the chest, to give a little bit of darker skin tone as well. But very very quick sketched contour contour line approach. Here we have uh, three studies of a young boy, an African uh, young male, and all the same subject matter: a mixing of chalks in the skin tones to render a little bit darker skin tone in through uh, there. And the, the rhythm that he, he continues to utilize in the photo, remember everything is kind of pulled down in this drawing in that direction. And then here everything is kind of pulled down in that direction. Notice the 
almost effortless contour lining in the clothing, some really dark folds, and through here he works to his advantage to, to really render a shorthand uh, version of the drawing. So very quick contoured sketch, and then he gets slows down in the head, in the eyes, and the facial features, and renders out the beautiful cheek in through here, through here, and underneath the jaw of the of the male here. Both all three of these poses are quite difficult poses, especially this one and this one for their their perspective tilted over a little bit. So we have a head tilted down. There would be the boxy version of that here across. So you can see why understanding the volumetric figure is important too. And this one's a little bit flatter uh, with the profile, but we here we we have here the the head in about this kind of tilt here as well. So really beautiful um, expressive drawing from Watto. Watto. Here we have a male leaning downward. Um, beautiful combination of again chalks, the sanguine kind of red chalk right in through here, the ear. Notice how quickly sketched the ear is in through your lovely passage. And then how he envelops the entire drawing in a little bit of charcoal. We know that the light source is coming from this angle. It's lighter here hitting, really powerful there coming across because everything is darker on this side, right? So we have coarse shadows here. Look at the eye, control the eye. Notice how this is not straight across, but curvature of the skull. Um, really renders that well, and I think the mouth here is quite particularly uh, beautiful with the dark uh, brownish chalk in through here. Just a masterful control of head structure, but look at the, the range of chalk marks. He smudges a little bit, then he comes back on with a very controlled, very line, hard to control actually, by the way, contour line with the pencil tip, then he gets into some thick darks with the charcoal marks running through here, the chalk marks running through there to finish out to finish out the sketch. And here's kind of here's the the boxy head structure to put it all into you know perspective of what he's thinking about and making that making that work, right? And of course the neck comes down in through there. So there's the combiasso head running through there, the center line and through there. Another really quick sketch, another great example of, of Watteau. Look at the rhythm, this curved rhythm to move us around curving downward with the the, the, uh, the mark. So I tell my students um, in the beginning, as they're learning to really begin to draw more seriously with purpose, is never smudge only uh, with your fingers of the chamois. That's kind of an amateur thing to do. So if you're doing that, see if you can uh, try to get yourself out of that habit. But if you do smudge, smudge a little bit, and then get your contour lines on top, top of that. It's a very handsome look perfected in the, the Renaissance by uh, blending the tones initially, a lighter tone, and then coming back on with a contour line. Not only do you get light, but you get rhythm and you get movement as well with that. It really works. They didn't do that as much in painting. They left it smoother. That's why I probably like the drawing so much is, is because of that particular approach. Here we have a little bit tighter version of Watteau's uh, character design studies. He would do multiple studies for paintings in these figures would get in his paintings. If, you, if you're if you not familiar with the paintings, please please go see them too. They're, they're quite lovely, but the drawings to me are more, more my favorites. Um, but these, these particular individuals would be in party scenes, feasting scenes, uh, erotic uh, scenes or scenes of flirtation in in love or some kind of masquerade like you see the mask right you know running through there so this was all about the aristocracy and then generally these these figures the african figures were there as probably servants uh, at that at that particular time you know, slavery was still going on in in in, in many parts of the world but uh, not necessarily uh, all over france and um, but they were certainly used as servants so you see the difference between the, the, the ethnicities here, just a kind of a politi political art uh, commentary, but then just, you know, ultimately the beautiful craftsmanship in the drawings. And again, working on this brown kind of light toned paper, you get a full color range. They look like they're in color, don't they? But they're really not. You have the sanguine, you have the white chalk, right? And then you have the, the blacker charcoal there as well, used to great effect. Here another version that we see with Watteau, different head studies. You know, and, and for all you art students, and I try to tell my my um, my students here is that not only were there the, the great effortless contouring, this is a quick 
contouring approach. Now, if you go back to the basic section, we have a contour line, a long-term still life that's a more controlled and slower approach. This one is for more masterful in the technique in that it's fast, it's quick. Look at the hat almost effortlessly rendered, contoured around, and he keeps it light and loose with the toning. The design, you know, putting it across the page and they fall across the page. Everything you do, design it. And, and don't just throw things across the page unless they really don't mean anything. But then the rendering in the eyes, the, the nose, the, the, lip, and the lips, um, masterful points of view, um, really bring this drawing great, great life. Here we see a quicker study of a male, and we see the, the uh, very quick, quick gestural approach of Watteau, the quickness of the line work, right, the um, effortless quality of contouring, the uh, quick use of value in the eyes, points of darkness, the mouth, uh, what is slightly a beard, the, the uh, coarse shadow of the cheek, the nose, Mostly sanguine with a little bit of chalk, and then he indicates what could be garlands coming across the hair, uh, or or actually hair it, itself as well. But lovely tilted head in. Um, we're looking slightly at eye level, and the tilted head is t tilted down. This might even be out of out of his head too, as well, from imagination. Unless we not forget, all you know, it's not just about figure drawing, but we can look at drawing of still life objects, in this case a lovely, lovely drawing of a shell, a conch shell of some sort. And we want to analyze to see how believable it is and how structured and alive it is and how three-dimensional with an economy of means. And to do that we can go deeper. Look at the beautiful chalk lines to render out the background and be gentle and soft about it and then get these wonderful, wonderful shadows in through here and then look how he blends the two colors together by using a little dark. But what I really love are these rich darks in through here. The rich darks are brown, but then ultimately look at the rhythm lines that he keeps of his shell. This cross contouring here in this rhythm and then the cross contouring back across the form this way is quite lovely and he gets this rhythm that keeps vortexing and turning into the figure, and of course you ultimately get these darks in the shell. And then the lip of the shell, these beautiful little striations of marks. This is a masterful study in not giving us a finished product, but not, you know, not having it be photo real and rendering it forever. I think you'll do yourself a great amount of good is to loosen up your approach over time. Try not to render every single detail, but get the essence of that. It's not easy, but it's doable. And I think it's appropriate for the level of draftsmanship that you might be after. This, this might even be ink across here. It's kind of hard to tell because I don't see a grainy effect. So he might, use, might have used a little sepia ink to render out these last ones. Even though it looks grainy here, it doesn't end through here. Just a, just a masterful job. Another rendering by Watteau. Again, you notice the probably a slower contour line in the hair. He probably contoured most of the figure with that lighter kind of chalky line and then began to come in to the model with some softer blending and toning, maybe smudging with the hand and then he goes back with the pencil. Um, uh, if you're going to make an error, don't smudge. Try not to smudge unless you're going to smudge and then come back on with contouring line um, or just use contour line and rendering with the pencil. Then the rhythm, the flow of the sepia lines um, to show contouring with the model and then these beautiful dark dots of coarse shadow just to give interest to that. Let's get in there deeper since this one is a high res and look at that. Look at the fingers. This is almost Velasquez like, impressionistic like, you know, right in through there. Look at the contouring, you know, look at that. He's telling us that this is kind of a box. Here's the direction and then downward. Here and then downward. Here and then downward. Here and then downward. So this is a beautiful rendition of that contour lining and then this, these well-placed darks will really help and then look how loose all of this is. So just a kind of a gorgeous, sumptuous, you know, almost an effortless kind of contouring and then these, again, the contouring around with these sepia marks around, again, wide of the chest um, and then slight like contouring to give us that 3D approach. So he's telling us we've got, you know, an object like a cylinder Right, but that's not enough. We also need to need to see 
this kind of an idea. So this is the basic design of that, and then you get into the art artfulness. He does it here in the cheek, the head too. Whoops, the head too, um, but it's softer. And it's, what's interesting, he leaves this. It might have been unfinished. He leaves the focal point, the head, a little relatively unfinished, except except for the eyes. But let's get in there deeply and take a look at, at um, just the beautiful quality of the hair. That's all about rhythm and movement, isn't it? Look at that rhythm through there, these little turns of hair. You know, there's not a heavy outline through there. It's just a soft, gradual transition from the value in her cheek to the value here in the background. And they really keep on coming. There's just drawing after drawing of this this beautifulness. What I like is these little this little dot of the, where the cleavage where the breast separates just a little tone. I think it's beautiful. Um, the use of different colors. The same same model here from different points of view. He's just exploring points of view. And these are not long drawings. These are probably 20, 30 minutes each. So he could explore his model pretty quickly. And, um, you know, a, a contour probably done mostly in sepia first, right? Notice the curve. Here's the construction line, side plane of the head. And then he comes back on with a darker sepia tone. He might have smudged a little bit through here and then run his contours across. Don't, don't be afraid to let your contours really show up. Your contouring, cross contouring line. Here's the beautiful muscle, the sternocleidal mastoid coming into the sternum right through here, right on up. Okay, there's the clavicle in through there. Ear rendered, darker hair. The hair's not fussed over, it's still rhythm and movement, and then we have the same thing with the profile drawing in through here. We'll get a little bit deeper with that, and we can see that the brown sepia tone works, works nicely, the light chalk to give a soft highlight. Notice that it's not too harsh, just slightly undering, underpinning of the jaw. And then these beautiful, beautiful uh, char uh, charcoal uh, chart walks. Look at the, let's go into the lips and the mouth in this figure and look how effortlessly, in just a few marks, he gets just a little of the contouring here in and then pops out, back in and then out with the chin and then this beautiful node. So if you studied anatomy, this pulling down to this orbicularis aura, uh, 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 aurus area of the mouth pulls down. And he just gracefully shows us that to give us the cheek, the chin uh, coming down. So there's the pull, the cheek, the jaw, and then the fold of the mouth to give us that little effortless, effortless touch. And then the, the eye, little curve for the uh, pupil and iris, and the little highlight there really brings about the ending point of that, uh, of that drawing.